organizing and mobilizing. At what point did the Black Lives Matter movement get involved? Well, technically, they never got involved. It was just a slogan to us. It was just a slogan. We had, first thought off was hands up, don't shoot. They called it the hands up, don't shoot movement. You know, we in the streets, we in the streets maybe 16, 18 hours a day. So of course, you know, you need chance, you need, you know, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. electrifying the movement. So we, we come in with the hands up, don't shoot, no justice, no peace. We want freedom, freedom. No, we change things every day. Then someone came with the Black Lives Matter. We sing signs that say Black Lives Matter. So that's catchy. So we started saying Black Lives Matter. And it caught on and it became so big. The whole time, we never even knew this is actually an organization of, of lesbian and gay people. We just saying Black Lives Matter because it's catchy. We never had a meeting with these people. We never even knew they existed until Mike Brown's funeral. At that point, it was already, you know, it was already a big story. So uh, they were using the Twitter accounts to. Uh, create these GoFundMe's and create these different uh, PayPal accounts all in the name of Ferguson, all in the name of Mike Brown and going under the name Black Lives Matter. So if you're from the outside looking in, you see Ferguson, you see Black Lives Matter, right. you think all oh, these people are legit. So they're sending these people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, even millions from what I've, from, from what I've been told and what I've read online, they say George Zorro. He's one of those, uh, one of those small hats, I think. He, uh, Indeed. They said he sent $33 million through organizations like Black Lives Matter, Operation of... Um, so, hold up real quick. Mm -hmm. So now... He started sending Black Lives Matter. And it caught on. It became so big the whole time. We never even knew this is actually an organization of, of lesbian and gay people. We just sent... Black Lives Matter because it's catchy. We never had a meeting with these people. We never even knew they existed. So we actually created Black Lives Matter through our energy. But the whole time, they were an organization and they had different plans. And what they was doing was, they was allowing us to do all the hard work, mobilize from the streets, go to war with the police. Or they said on Twitter and tweeted about it to the world. And most of the world, they're not here in Missouri, they scared to come here and see what's going on. They ain't watching it on TV. So they want to get the truth somehow. So they're going to Twitter to get that truth. But Twitter's not going to tell you the truth because none of the people from Ferguson were even on Twitter. I mean, I didn't even start a Twitter page until Mike Brown's funeral. At that point, until Mike Brown's funeral. At that point, it was already, you know, it was already a big story. So uh, they were using the Twitter accounts to uh, create these GoFundMe's and create these different uh, PayPal accounts all in the name of Ferguson, all in the name of Mike Brown, and going under the name Black Lives Matter. So if you from the outside looking in, you see Ferguson, you see Black Lives Matter, right. you think all oh, these people are legit. So they sending these people thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, even millions from what, I, from, from what I've been told and what I've read online, they say George Zorro, He's one of those, uh, one of those small hats, I think. He, uh, Indeed. They said he sent $33 million through organizations like Black Lives Matter, Operation of... Um, so, hold up real quick. Mm -hmm. So now... Take a look at this man. His name is Darren King D. Seals. To this day, his 2016 murder remains unsolved. Seals was nothing short of fascinating. He burst onto the scene in St. Louis as one of the most vocal and well-known anti-police brutality activists following the death of Michael Brown and Ferguson. One could even make the argument he helped create the bogus hands up, don't shoot tagline that literally started a movement. This is where it gets to the surprising part of the story. You see, Darren Seals always voiced his skepticism of the Black Lives Matter organization. He accused them of stealing from the local St. Louis, Louis community. He woke up to the ills of liberal leadership in his city, and he started to denounce Democrats in St. Louis as part of the problem with police, with the violence, and yes, with all the poverty, too. He even put... So saying Black Lives Matter, and they caught on, it became so big, the whole time, we never even knew this is actually an organization of, of lesbian and gay people. 
we just seen Black Lives Matter because it's catchy. We never had a meeting with these people. We never even knew they existed. So we actually created Black Lives Matter through our energy, but the whole time they were an organization and they had different plans. And what they was doing was they was allowing us to do all the hard work, mobilize from the streets, go to war with the police. But they said on Twitter and tweeted about it to the world. And most of the world, they're not here in Missouri, they scared to come here and see what's going on. They ain't watching it on TV. So they want to get the truth somehow. So they going to Twitter to get that truth. But Twitter's not going to tell you the truth because none of the people from Ferguson were even on Twitter. I mean, I didn't even start a Twitter page until Mike Brown's funeral at that point. Take a look at this man. His name is Darren King D. Seals. To this day, his 2016 murder remains unsolved. Seals was nothing short of fascinating. He burst onto the scene in St. Louis as one of the most vocal and well-known anti-police brutality activists following the death of Michael Brown and Ferguson. One could even make the argument he helped create the bogus hands up, don't shoot tagline that literally started a movement. This is where it gets to the surprising part of the story. You see, Darren Seals always voiced his skepticism of the Black Lives Matter organization. He accused them of stealing from the local St. Louis community. He woke up to the ills of liberal leadership in his city, and he started to denounce Democrats in St. Louis as part of the problem with police, with the violence, and yes, with all the poverty, too. He even put